talk about ICD-10. Uh, big topic everyone is thinking about, everyone is concerned about the transition and uh, the burden it's going to put in the office and, and on their productivity. So in the next uh, few minutes here, we want to show you something that I think will, will put your mind at ease. It's a complete package that ACOM put together to really help doctors and offices ease into the ICD-10, learn the new codes, and be as productive as uh, they have been with ICD-9 with the new code. So uh, there are three things that we want to talk about here. Uh, how are we going to help you ease into the new codes, learn them, and organize them. Uh, what I mean by easing into the new codes, uh, ICD-10 is not rocket science. It, it, it's just simply a much more expanded list of codes. Uh, with ICD-9, we used to have 16,000 codes. Now we're talking about 69,000 plus codes. So it's a much bigger expanded set of codes, and it's going to take time for everyone to learn these codes. So the biggest concern we're hearing from doctors is, as I'm learning these codes, how am I going to keep up? I have already a busy office. I'm seeing patients all day, and I can barely keep up with things coding in ICD-9. When these new codes come in, I got to maintain the same office flow. I got to be, I got to maintain the same speed and productivity that I'm having now. So that's why we developed this convert later option. I think most of you are going to love this feature because it simply will allow you to continue to code in ICD-9 as you're seeing your patients and doing your consultations and then shift that ICD-10 portion to a separate step that you could do at the end of the day or you can even assign to one of your staff members that can go back, review these charts that you completed, and go through a conversion wizard that will convert these codes to ICD-10 before you send them to billing. So that's one of the three things that we're going to show you. Second, uh, there is no substitute from learning ICD-10. So even though we gave you a, a great way to kind of ease the pressure a bit, as you're learning the new codes, you still need to learn the codes and your staff need to learn the codes. So we built three layers into the system that would help you and your staff learn the codes. So they include uh, an intelligent crosswalk that was developed specific, specifically for chiropractors that would allow you to plug in an ICD-9 code and give you the best equivalent ICD-10. Um, we know with ICD-10 and the expanded code set, there are many codes that just simply never existed in ICD-9. So that crosswalk is not going to help you for these codes. So in addition to the crosswalk, we built a complete full-text search engine that would allow you to do full-text search or, or all 69,000 codes and give you the codes that pertain to the keyword. Okay, That would really allow you to learn the codes on the fly and just plug in these keywords and see what's available. If there are multiple options, you can see what are the difference between the option and pick the right code for you. Last but not least, doesn't matter how good the crosswalk is or the search engine is, every expert out there tells us that with ICD-10, there's no substitute of accessing that tabular list. And, and, and any of you that are not familiar with the tabular list, that, that's kind of the ICD-10 Bible. That, that's the manual with all the hierarchy of all the different sections and chapters and codes. It also has all the exclusions and all the rules. Uh, so we went ahead and, and took an electronic copy of that complete tabular list and built it into the system. So if you need to research a code, you don't need to leave our software and go to a website or to a manual. You can just simply look at the tabular list on the fly right there. Okay? And then the last part is simply the ability to organize these codes. So we have a body helper that would allow you to organize all the ICD-10 codes by region and allow you to tag different codes to specific body regions so this way you can find them easily. And then also a patient preferred list that would allow you to, every time you're plugging in or using an ICD-10 code with a specific patient, it's going to keep it in a short list so when that patient comes back again later on, rather than searching the whole database, you can kind of just look at that list and be able to use it. So enough PowerPoint, let's jump right to the software and kind of see all these things in action. So first, let's look at that whole easing into ICD-10. So I'm seeing a patient. I got 20 more in the waiting area here. I don't have time to deal with ICD-10 right now. So with this option, I can plug in my ICD-9 code. The system will insert the description and finish my consultation with the patient and simply close their chart. What I and put it in a to-do list so I can convert it later and I don't forget about it and then move 
on to the next patient. So that would really help you ease up that transition and allow you to keep track of anyone that needs to be converted and come back at the end of the day and convert them. So let's assume it's the end of the day or I got some downtime. I can click on that patient chart, go my diagnosis again, and just simply follow our conversion. I still have my ICD-9 codes here. I click on convert to ICD-10, and the system automatically will allow you to convert one code at a time. So I double click on the code. It tells me here's the best equivalent for ICD-10. If that looks good, double click on it. I insert it now with ICD-10 equivalent. Move to the next code. Again, do the same thing, double click on it, pick the right code, hit OK, apply, I'm done with this chart. So as you can imagine, the doctor can do it, one of your staff members can do it, the wizard will walk you through the process of the conversion. Okay, so that's, and that's something that you could continue to do two weeks after October 1st, two months. Um, you can take your time till you're comfortable coding an ICD-10 and continue to code an ICD-9 to kind of maintain your productivity or office flow, okay? Now let's move on to the next phase, which is I still gotta learn that ICD-10. So we put that ICD-10 assist with all these educational tools. So the crosswalk is the easiest one to understand. I plug in the code, and as you know, many of the ICD-9 codes got multiple equivalents in ICD-10. So if I plug in the code, if there are multiple ones, it will show up here. I don't have to think about it. And it's in plain English here. I can see the difference between the three one. You don't want to use the unspecified, so you should use one of the other three. Pick the one that's most appropriate for the case that you're dealing with, double click on it, and that will insert it right into your notes. Okay? Next, I want to show you the search option. So Let's say I don't know or I don't have an ICD-9 code to cross-reference. I can just simply type a search, so we'll type shoulder and hit search, and as you would imagine, there's a lot of code. There's 1627 code under shoulder. Um, let's be a little bit more specific. It's a shoulder strain and hit search again, and again, it will show you now we're down to 27 codes. All right, but I know it's a left shoulder. If I type that, as you can see, the system narrowed down your results as you type keywords, and it doesn't have to be in the same right order, as long as they are in the description, will show up in your list. Now that I have a list of shoulder strain on the left side, I can, again, read, and if it's an initial encounter, I double click on it, and that will insert it. If, if I'm not sure, I can also explore that, and that will take you right to the tabular list. And if you notice at the top here, you can see the hierarchy of where that code lives within the ICD-10 tabular list. I can hit back to go to like a higher level to see if that's a better fit. I can hit back again to go to a higher level. If I'm comfortable with it, I can double click again on the S46.81 and then the S46.812 and pick the one that I need, insert it in my note. So crosswalk, search, and full access to the tabular list. That's how you can learn the codes and that's a lot more efficient than spending weekends and hours on, on seminars because it's on the fly and it deals with the codes that you deal with uh, or the cases that you deal with in your office, okay? Last but not least, I wanna show you some of the organization that we built in to help you get more organized. So this is what I'm talking about when I say the body helper. So this is all the different regions. I can click on any specific region and it will show me all the codes that pertain to that region. So that's a great way to find the codes without going through drop down list or through the manual. Okay, in addition, every time I'm plugging one of these codes into a patient chart, we're also keeping track of these codes and building a custom short list for each patient. So when that patient comes back again, I will see these are the codes that I use the most with that patient or that I've used in the past. So between the body helper and the short patient list, that would really help you organize your codes and be a lot more efficient with ICD-10. So again, we showed you how we can ease your way into the ICD-10 by allowing you to continue to code an ICD-9 for whatever period of time you need, help you learn and get educated about the new codes, help you organize the new codes. So uh, this is a, a package, we're not aware of any other chiropractic system that has anything close to this. Many have a crosswalk, many have bits and pieces of it, but no one really thought through the whole process and provided a platform for doctors and chiropractors to transition and learn the ICD-10. We hope this was informative. We encourage all of you to visit our, uh, the software section of our website. Uh, the demo room has more videos and more uh, demonstrations of our product and would love to hear from you.
Thank you very much for your time.